Good afternoon, everybody. I hope I am being heard well. And if not, do let me know. But here we have our next creation. I was, oh, I was actually going to show you. Let me see if I can do so. Um, let me just grab an image for you. And then I can show you exactly what I'm talking about with my inspiration of the day. And let me just show you this. Here we go. Give me a second. There you are. The other day, I was thinking about some inspiration for beginner painters. And I started exploring some folk, um, folk options, like folk designs from different countries. And Folk design has is characteristically block colors, right? As you can see in this Pakistani design right here of a peacock. This is a fo folk version or a folk rendition. Um, I found this, as you can see, in Dreamstown. But it's a very inspirational photo for working with color blocking, right? Because here we don't have many transitions or shadows or gradients, but we have a lot of different colors. And we can really come up with a very satisfying painting without using too many advanced skills and really practice our, paint, our painting skills. And you know, I had some ideas of how to do this painting and make it more advanced. But here you see, so that's the original, as you can see now on the screen. I'm going to turn that off for a second and show you what I'm working with. Here's my drawing uh, <coughs> that I just did in a few minutes inspired by this and this was traced so in my learning process about uh, this particular peacock painting what I started with is I found the inspiration online and I found the, the inspirational photo and then I traced it and I didn't trace it in order to use this traced version as my final painting I don't even want to use it in this configuration. The reason why I traced this painting, because look at this, like see, traced version, I mean, it does not look as good as the original, right? Some of the lines are outside, some of the lines are inside, his head is smaller, his beak is smaller than it was. You know, if you look at the original again, let me see. This is the original, right? And this is the traced version. Hang on, I'm kind of missing a light here. I think I did turn on all my lights. Let's see how this works out. Uh -huh. Sorry, there we go. So this is the trace vision that I did on the light, uh, the light table, right? But the original, it's time to show you the original. There we go. The original is a lot more graceful in its presentation. The original looks a lot more flowy, right, than the traced version. The traced version, in my opinion, oops, hang on, I'm just trying to click here. Okay, the traced version, in my opinion, um, looks bad. But if then look at my, after, after I studied the drawing through the tracing of it, after I looked at it in a deep way, I then was able to draw this right in my sketchbook. This is my daily drawing sketchbook that I've been drawing some ideas, some inspirations, some views, some other folk designs. I've been thinking about these folk designs for a while. There were some mountains and a chair. This is just in this one sketchbook but we're gonna be talking about more about the daily drawing sketchbooks next weeks, in the next weeks. But right now, we're looking at this Pakistani bird, peacock, or Pakistani design, I guess. And so we have our traced version. We, we got, got in, in comfortable with the subject. We then, I tried the focus of the subject 
in my sketchbook. And so now I'm sitting down to the actual drawing of the subject, right? So in the original, this is a landscape or this is a portrait drawing like so. And you know what, this is not a block. So I'm just going to remove a page from here just to make sure. too early maybe this tape will be useful um, just going to tape down my paper a little bit what I'm going what I'm doing right now is taping the tape to my dress and then peeling it off and then taping it to my painting this is to remove any tackiness or stickiness from this tape even though I'm using the specific watercolor painters tape unfortunately it's still sticky enough to sometimes rip the paper perhaps my paper um, could be better quality because I am not using 100% cotton paper. But you know what? The reason I'm not using 100% cotton paper is because most of you guys are not using 100% cotton paper. So showing you something on paper that you're probably not using um, wouldn't be fair or it wouldn't make sense. Right? So I'm just going to move my microphone here a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better for you with the fan apologies it's a very hot day where i am so we have a fan going i am looking at a quieter system for making this um, heat and recordings work hang on a second i have to touch the microphone one more time because the legs are not cooperating with me okay there we go is that still good that seems okay and hopefully we'll be able to mitigate the fan noise soon. All right, so I am here and where is my eraser? I was just using it for my morning drawings. All right, here is my piece of paper. Now I am envisioning the subject on this piece of paper, but I'm also realizing that there is a lot to be included. So in order to limit myself from using too much, I am going to take my funny your funny ruler here. It is funny because I don't know what kind of units these are, but they're units, they're not millimeters, that's for sure. And I'm going to go with 11, number 11, and then I'm going to do the same on this side, going from here to number 11. And on this side as well, uh, making sure it's straight, number 11. If this was a real ruler with actual measurements, I would say three centimeters or so, maybe four. So I'm just using, lining up the edge of the ruler with the page to make sure it's square. I'm drawing a line, just about 11 units away, there we go. And this will be our frame. So I'm just going to make sure I'm straight here. This will be our frame, so we'll make sure not to go over the frame, and then these lines can be erased in the future. Da -da 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 -da. So now I've given myself a place where I can center the bird because otherwise I'd be centering the bird outside of the frame. And as you know from the original drawing that we're planning out, this is the planning out of the drawing section. We're going to go into the color very soon here, but no painting can go into the color section before the drawing. So we're taking the original folk bird and we're going to do our own version. 
So I know that the bird's belly is very nice and rounded. I know that there is a beautiful little wing like this. And I know that the second part of the wing was much larger, pointing down. I am. Um, the double line is confusing my eyes. So I'm going to remove it. Make it a chubby bird. And then I really wanted to add legs to the bird. And then we're going to go ahead. You know what? I need to look at a picture of a peacock. Just to make sure, because I don't know. I from owning parrots, I I remember that um, specific birds have specific. So on the other screen, I'm typing in peacock and I'm looking at images. And of course, it's going to give me a bunch of. Uh, so the beak is. So it's not like this at all. So even though I'm doing a folk drawing, I want it to at least be in line with what... So the beak is almost like an extension. Maybe not that long, but looks more like a crow. Like an extension of the thing. It's pretty uh, small. Like, I mean narrow. I'm just going to refine the head until I'm satisfied with how it looks. Right? There's something on the peacock's head, the peacock that I'm looking at on the Google search. Can you feel free to do a Google search on the peacock's head? It's a line that goes to, and the other one that goes like that. I don't know if that's going to look good. It does not look like a peacock. We're going to fix it. Now that eye is way too small. And this is exactly the journey of the artist with understanding the peacocks. I think that this rest of this head is not correct. Right away, it starts to look a little peacocky. I don't know what change. All right. I think the nostril is a little too strong, and I'm not sure if it's in the right exact position. I mean, it's close to the original, but it's not making me feel peacocky. Sometimes we have to see that's that's pretty peacocky. Now I kind of feel like his tail is too small. Or his that's a wing. That's yes. So on the side view, it looks like this wing 
which probably shouldn't be pointing up so much. On the side view, it looks like this wing here. So now understand what I'm doing is looking at a photo of an actual bird and simplifying it to match this folk design. And as you can see, with just a few small changes, this random chicken is starting to look a lot more peacocky. I don't know what quality I consider peacocky, but this is definitely peacocky. And I almost want to add something that would indicate the tail here. You know because the way this peacock is positioned it's perfectly as one maybe it's too much and notice like if i were just to, to look at the original peacock that i drew it looked like a weird turkey i might lose face or i might lose the ability to determine whether my drawing is good right but I understand and remember that Michelangelo took years, years to perfect his one painting in the Sistine Chapel. Oh no, it was David, right? Four years to sculpt one sculpture. And so having patience with yourself and understanding that, you know what? You can get the essence of the peacock on, on paper. You just have to remember what the essence is. Just have to get tuned into it. right and then making sure that this is strong as well right and so now we have the peacock and and the peacock like a chicken has some strong toes one pointing back and i really think that it's important to show these Now this foot is supposed to be all the way to the ground and he's supposed to be grasping at the ground. So you need to show that grasping element, right? Also the peacock's feet, they are thicker at the base and they slim up a little bit. So I'm still not sure about how I did this tail here. Maybe it shouldn't be underneath. Yes, I do have a needle wind eraser um, somewhere. It is uh, right here. You think it's going to do a better job erasing these lines? My gosh, it does. Well, whoever suggested the Nina Boy Racer was correct. All right. I'm just looking at this other wing, the, this part, and I'm wondering if it should be more like this, like it's supposed to be. And then this part can be the tail. Right? That's pretty peacocky. Now, on that original drawing or mm, image from the Pakistani website or Dreamstein through the label Pakistani, there were some interesting elements around the peacock, right? Um, in one place, we see this design like this mm. 
right. And then And then there was like a little heart in the corner. The composition is your own. It's not like... stars and there was a little flower in the corner mm. the flower didn't but it could have a little bit of one color leaves Maybe we can have also a little bit of a something like that. And you know, the sky's your limit. You can add elements here all you want. And maybe I will add some more elements later. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to my color palette and my water. And so today we're going to be using the Koi watercolors look at this two days um, the koi watercolors and there we go. they come with this palette and I do not rinse or wash the palette off all the time because I want to make sure that we I, if I wash it off it's going to um, sorry <laughs> If I wash it off, it's not going to have, uh, it, it's just going to waste the paint. Sorry, I'm trying to think of two things at once. Where are my paint brushes? They're right here. I put them away. All right. Here we are. I'm just going to pick this one. It's a good paint brush. It's a... Uh, number six, I believe. Mm, this one got labeled. Looks like a number six to me. Um, just before I run into it, I'm going to. I'm not erasing at all. I'm just erasing the bulk of it. I like to have a soft um, pencil when I'm drawing the original. <coughs> Excuse me. But I also like to have most of the lines erased before I start painting or putting color to. We're not going to be painting the edges today. This is just going to be the first, first wash. That's why this class today is going to be a three-part series about color, because I want to make sure that we have the first wash, the second wash, and the third wash. And I have included some elements, some drawn elements here, but I will be including more of them in the second wash and the third wash. I just decided to do the rest of them in, with watercolors, not pencil. And this is generally how this is going to work. So I'm going to start by spraying my watercolors as well. Making sure they're activated. 
And I'm just going to go in with some large color swatches. You know what? I'm also going to spray this. Activate the colors in my palette. And I'm just going to grab this warm blue here that has some red in it. I'm going to blend a nice color. And then we might put that color right on top of here. Now this is painting wet on wet. So the color will not only move, but it'll also fade to a less saturated color. So with this light awash, you can still see the painting underneath. Mm, I don't necessarily want to go with the peacock. And this paint with water underneath is, is absolutely alive and activated right now. So I just messed up the yellow there. That's okay. Let's go in with this yellow. I'm just going to make it a little bit more yellow. Because it's almost going into green here, which is fine. Maybe some orange. don't have to worry when you're like see this is a nice mustard color let's put that in the bottom and blend it in with this this is the first wash the first wash doesn't necessarily it um, isn't necessarily going to be even visible in the final painting that really depends on how you paint it so <laughs> this is more about color blocking, putting a nice background. And blending it a little bit. This paper, um, it's good practice paper, but as you can see, it has some inter interesting textures as you paint it, which could be good or bad, depending on your, your point of view, I suppose. I'll put some more of that yellow here around the peacock's neck. It's not that I'm pressing hard and the paper is peeling. It's just this paper and this paint seem to have this kind of strange relationship where it's all granulated. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. And whenever, say, there's these lines here, and if I don't like them, if I do something like this, a lot of the lines will disappear. Now also because this is my background, I might want to put some more of the paint throughout. found a, like a deeper yellow color here that I might want to include. Still in the same family. Just 
moving colors around the page, looking at more grounding in the bottom. I have to work quickly here because some of these paints will dry on me. And I want to make sure that I still get the blending that I need for this first layer. So again, treating it with water, making sure it all blends. And now that it's a little bit wet, I may not want it to. Oh, that's interesting. So these folds in the paper, sometimes we might see them as unwanted and we might want to put our painting on. Oh, let's see if I can do this on an angle to bring a little bit more. I'm just grabbing my tissue here. Because all of these colors are beautifully moving throughout the page. And we don't have to accept them where they are. We can move them elsewhere. Picking up some extra here in the valleys. The paper has <coughs> playing as a bit of an angle to empty the valleys. The creative process. Now I'm kind of liking what's happening here, and I want to deepen that contrast. So maybe I'll draw a few bits of color in the wind. I'm not letting them go outside the wing because I'm going to monitor my progress here. Right, and push it off here. Not sure what happens there. That paper is definitely not holding on to the pa page anymore. And see, at this stage, when it's really, really wet, but no longer dripping and flowing, what we can do is we can give it some nice texture with a bit of salt. It's gonna pick up the last of your valleys and then I'm just going to rebuild some of this texture here, but using this cool red as well. And maybe some of that mustard mixed in with it. Because there was a bit of a gap as I moved the paint all the way up. Here again, we're just going to use a little bit of water to Remove any lines. Oh, yo, 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 that is not what I meant to do. But you know what? <laughs> now we're there. Mistake or happy accident. That's going to make a really cool ground. I have now moved away from <laughs> creating a fault painting. And now I'm putting this, this peacock in some more realistic background maybe oh i don't know if this emerald green is right but maybe just a few spots we should really treat it with some other green like this one softening that emerald green with a bit of um, more, more warmer green. The emerald green is very cold. Our pile of salt, we can absolutely move it around. Or can treat it with more water, moving that green more at the bottom of the painting. I would like to go with something darker here. Something more like 
So now, the reason why I've split this painting into three sections is because, as you can see, we've been doing this a while and we haven't really gone, gotten very far. And I have some interesting experimentation with color going on here. I am now going in with black, even though very many watercolor artists don't like using black. I find what's happening here on my page is quite interesting. I think I would like to go with blue where the peacock's neck is. Is there such a thing as peacock blue in my palette? Let me see. I kept the box for this reason. Turquoise blue, Prussian blue, indigo, permanent blue light. I really like permanent blue light for the ultramarine. Okay, permanent blue light. That's the third one. Now, this permanent blue light does not look so light, but this is a peacock. I like the strong neck. I'm going to repeat that <coughs> in the wing. And hopefully it won't float away on me. to go in with emerald green now in the peacock. I wonder if it's a bad idea because it may blend but because this painting is all about experimentation okay this is very interesting I will not touch it I will not touch it now now, as you can see, this painting, except for this little valley that's now full, needs to wait. And what we're going to do is we're going to wait for a day or two to bring another level, another layer to this painting. And in the end, that peacock will be beautiful. But trying to rush this painting through one day or one session would be a mistake and would lead to unsatisfactory results. So that's why we're going to stop streaming right now and we're going to take this painting to the next level tomorrow. And it'll be totally different than the inspirational painting from Greenstein, but it will be our own version. <laughs> All right, until tomorrow.